Hello everybody, my name's Gaiden, and today I wanted to talk about shields in Mortau. When I was looking up more information on shields, I really couldn't find anything, at least on YouTube. Most of the guides on shields on here were pretty much how to exploit fighting shield users and how to beat them. Not so much on the actual benefits and the more advanced statistics of shields themselves, which actually aren't shown in the game. So I spent some time playing with them, testing, learning new things I didn't even know until days in, and now I'd like to share that with you. Now there are five shields in Mordau. The Heater Shield, Kite Shield, Targe, Buckler, and Pavice. Each of these have their own pros and cons to it. You can categorize these five shields in three different ways. Blocking shields can be held up indefinitely, at least until you run out of stamina. Parry shields more so belong as a parry aid, a little bit more stamina efficient than some weapons, but no more stamina efficient than top two-handed weapons and some one-handed weapons, and the Pavice in a league of its own as a deployment type shield. The first shield that we'll be talking about is the heater shield. At two points, it provides modest protection. It covers the torso when held up, but still leaves the head and the legs exposed. This shield can be held up indefinitely until you run out of stamina and get disarmed. This also applies to the next shield, the kite shield. At three points, the kite shield is a much larger shield that pretty much envelops the entire body from head to your shins. Your feet will still be exposed, but considering the protection it already provides, you can easily block pretty much anything in front of you. The same example of the archers aiming for your feet and tight attacks around the size of your shield can still get you, so keep that in mind. Moving on to the parry shields, we have the targe and the buckler. Now, parry shields or parry aids slightly differ from the previous shields that we have. Rather than just blocking with your weapon, you simply block with your shield. You can't keep it up, however. The benefits to this, though, are that they are slightly more stamina efficient per block, meaning you'll be saving more and more stamina in these fights. Also, when you're disarmed, you gain a small stamina boost. This is much different than the previous shields where you don't have any stamina at all, meaning your next block can easily disarm both your shield and then your weapon. But with the parry shields, that small boost can mean you can still fight, you can back off and protect yourself, giving you more of a fighting chance when this happens. Beyond that, the Buckler and the Targe have very minor differences between them, but functioning exactly the same. In terms of size, they have the exact same block radius. I know this because I actually asked one of the devs who confirmed it. The buckler is, again, one point costing more than the targe, and is slightly more stamina efficient, but that's it. They're pretty identical. The final shield in Mordhau is the Pavice. The Pavice is a very unique shield. It can be placed down pretty much anywhere on a flat surface, or even rough terrain. It's efficient at blocking arrows, being mobile cover you can place if you're playing a ranged character. It can block fire bombs, making the path of the fire around the shield, protecting whatever's behind it before burning as well. It can essentially block off areas completely, like placing it out on the top of a ladder, making it virtually impossible to knock over. All of that makes a shield only worth two points extremely valuable compared to, let's say, a 8-point toolbox. Sure, you can do mostly the same thing, and you can build stuff that the Pavice can't simply do, but for only 2 points, it's incredibly cheap for all that utility. <laughs> now that we've gotten the basics of each shield out of the way, and what they look like, what they do, we can take a look at this fancy list I made for this video. The first line, the guard type, is pretty much what I already explained, but here's a nice little refresher. You can see the heater and the kite shield are both blocking shields, you can hold them up indefinitely, while the targe and buckler are, again, parry shields. The pavice is neither of these, so I listed it as none. 
The next tier on this list is Stamina Damage Negation. Every weapon in the game has a value of stamina damage on a successful hit. On a successful block, each weapon and shields have a successful damage negation towards your stamina. It's very straightforward. If you take 19 points of damage and you block it with the 11 point heater shield, you'll take 8 damage total. Now, you may be thinking that these are good values for these shields. Shields are obviously more efficient than blocking with a weapon. But you'd be mistaken. I fell for that too when I first started playing this game. For example, the heater shield is on par in blocking stamina damage as the warhammer, the blacksmith's hammer, the axe, the arming sword, and the long spear. The targe and the kite are on par with the falchion, the astok, the long sword, the billhook, and the short spear. And the buckler, which is tied for the highest stamina damage negation in the game, is virtually with any other half decent or even great one handed and two handed weapons. These include the Zweihander, the Halberd, Evening Star, Bardish, Poleaxe, Maul, Greatsword, Executioner's Sword, Battleaxe, Waraxe, Messer, Bastard Sword, and even the Mace. So you may just be thinking, if these shields are just as good as all of these weapons in terms of blocking, why would I want to use a shield in the first place? Well. There are a few reasons. One, you just might be absolutely garbage at blocking attacks and you need all the help you can get. Two, you could always be useful when rushing archers, at least with a health shield in place. And three, you might be using a weapon with an extremely low stamina damage negation value like the rapier. And using something like a held shield or a parry shield will be extremely stamina efficient. The Pavice since you're not really using it, you're deploying it, doesn't have a value for this. And the next and final reason you might want to use a shield is on the next line. The next line is Stamina on Disarm. This is huge. With the health shields, it sucks. You have zero points when you're disarmed. You're essentially one more block away from being completely disarmed and considering it's two inventory slots for your weapon and your shield, unlikely you'll have a third item in your inventory. However, the big part comes from having that 30 stamina when you have a targe or a buckler. That 30 stamina gain that you get when you're disarmed is huge. That can be used to completely turn around the fight, make space, end the fight completely, or grab your shield and live another day until you decide to engage again. It's a huge boon in a fight over stamina, where essentially the first one to get disarmed loses, and the fact is you can afford to get disarmed your shield and have a stamina boost is incredibly useful. While now we've covered four of the five shields on the list, the Pavice has its time to shine. While none of the other shields are either deployable or consumable, the Pavice is both. And as I said earlier, it's a great shield that has so many uses, blocking fire, blocking pathways, just protecting yourself, protecting your teammates, and the fact that you can resupply and have more of them, that's what makes that shield great. And essentially, these are really the advanced statistics of all the shields, at least as far as I could find out. So hopefully now, not only do you know each shield specialty, but now you'll know their exact points in what they do. I'll take this opportunity to segue into the final part of this guide, which is essentially more obscure information about shields you may or may not have known. While you now know the pros and cons of each shield, essentially what they're good at, what they can do, and some benefits that happen even if you're disarmed, here's some things about shields you may not have known about. For instance, shields can block projectiles from anywhere they are, even if it's equipped on your back, even if you're not blocking with the shield that's just in your hand, or it's on your side like a buckler, you can block projectiles anywhere as long as they make contact with the shield. I have tested this, including when you're running with the Pavice in your hands before you place it, it will block ballista shots, arrows, crossbow bolts essentially anything. 
So one thing you may not know is even if you're not actively using a shield, having a shield on your back is just enough to make archers that much more angry trying to kill you. Also, something interesting that I discovered while testing this out. I learned that maybe this is an online thing, and I believe so, but held shields like the heater shield, when you raise the shield to bring it up and block an arrow, for some reason, even though the animation goes through and you see the little white shield glow indicating that your attack is parried, that's coming towards you, the shield just gets completely bypassed. And I believe that this is just a unfortunate casualty of being an online game and the game doesn't recognize fast enough. Here you'll see a few examples of this, me testing with a friend as well as testing with a random person on a random server. I tried this out also on a custom game with a bot to see if maybe a local game would change anything and I think it does there were a few times where it seems a little sketchy that maybe the same thing happens but so far that's one thing that you should know if you do use a shield or you're facing someone against with a shield consider that that one little time the wind up time to put your shield up it's especially weak to arrows melee attacks block perfectly it went through the shield projectile attacks a little differently and i don't know if that's just the coding in the game or if that's just latency um, this is something that you should consider keeping in mind shields are actually quite beneficial against horsemen too for instance if you take a couched lance hit or any couched weapon particularly you can block it with your shield and only lose the shield if you blocked it with your weapon you'll lose your weapon and considering how far they can fly you may not get up in time to actually get it, but at least having your weapon still gives you a fighting chance. Alternatively, you can use the Pavice to force them and block them and use it to take down the horsemen. It can be a very efficient tactic. And when I mean I tested the Pavice against everything, I mean everything. It surprisingly held very well against even the spawn ballista taking multiple shots before breaking. And if that wasn't enough, I took the liberty of trying it against the catapult. Fortunately, the horse didn't die on the first time, but I can't tell if that was because of the pavice reducing damage or just simply it wasn't close enough. So that might just remain a mystery a bit longer. Well, that really wraps up everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I'm really surprised. I thought this would be like a six or seven minute video and it's almost 13 minutes now. Wow, I better cut this short. So thanks so much for watching guys. Uh, I really appreciate you stopping by. If you really like this guide, feel free to like and comment about why. If you have any ideas or things you'd like me to cover in the future of Mordhau, let me know and maybe I'll consider doing that. And while you're at it, feel free to subscribe and see any future content I might <laughs> make. But uh, Knowing my posting history, it eh, might be a long shot. If you have any questions about shields I didn't talk about or things you want to ask me if, hey, can this shield do X if this happens, let me know. And if I know, I'll let you know in the comments. So this has been Gaiden and thanks for watching.